Of course, Nellie's still naming things after herself. She probably has that burn book from training camp from 1974 still. Remember, the show is PG-13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. Norbert's is on the road. They'll have a conference booth at Region 5, Region 6, Elite Nationals in San Jose, and GAT. So stop by and say hello. Mention Gymcastic to get additional savings on their already 10% off show-only discount. Who doesn't want a discount on top of a discount? Of course, you can find more at the website, Norbert's.net. She wore her hair in yarn. Her leotard had a zipper. She wasn't afraid to argue with her coach in front of the TV cameras. She named all the skills after herself. She's such an epic badass that we're still talking about her today. And she is still one of the most powerful women in gymnastics. It's the Nellification of the Code of Points. Every skill Nelly Kim has ever named after herself. It's the Code of Nellies episode. This is the 29th episode for 2023. It's July 18th. And welcome to the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm Jessica and I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Beam Situation. Spencer, tell us about what happened with our commission. Yes, this is our commission giveaway episode. We randomly drew a club gym nerd member who would get a full commission of their choice. Our winner was Inga, who really came through, really, oh, really came through, and com- commissioned an episode on the Kims. So this is the commission. What are all the elements named after Nelly Kim in the Code of Points? Who actually performed them first and when and at what competition? Did Nellie Kim ever perform them? And when did she perform them for the first time? And when did she name them after herself? So before we get into the skills, Jessica, give us a little, a little, get us into the vibe of Nellie. Give us a little Nellie Kim background for those who might not be like me and think about Nellie Kim six times a week. <laughs> if, you, if you happen to not think about Nellie six times a week, maybe this will be helpful. So... Nelly Kim is one of the greatest Soviet gymnasts of the 1970s and into the 80s. She owns six Olympic medals. You guys, six Olympic medals. Five of them are gold. She has 17 combined world and Olympic medals. That ranks ninth on the all-time list. The all-time list where it's like Latinina, Horkina, Simone Biles. She's still ninth on that list. She received two tens at the 1976 Olympics, one on vault in the all-around, one in the floor final, and despite what she told the Olympic t- Channel in 2019, <laughs> which is a quote, like 15 seconds before me, she, which I love her for, she received her first 10 on July 21st. Three days before that, on July 18th, Nadia received her first 10. So that Three is the days, order. 15 seconds, I mean... It's- I mean, if you're going back to the 70s, that's like, that's a blip of difference, really. Exactly. It is. (laughs) 50 years ago, it was basically 15 seconds. She went on to become a judge, then a member of the Women's Technical Committee. As a judge, she was once suspended for bias judging. She then went on to become the head of the Women's Technical Committee in 2004, and she oversaw the introduction of the open code of points. So that was the end of the perfect 10 and the beginning of counting difficulty and execution and and marrying them together. Um, After the 2016 Olympics, she became the FIG vice president, one of the vice presidents. She left her position as the head of the Women's Technical Committee, which is now Donatella Sacchi's position. We talk about her all the time. So she's still one of the most powerful women in gymnastics and her vice president in a position. She continues, she lives in the U.S., uh, her sister owns a gym here, and uh, she continues to judge in the United States um, and in the NCAA, which we enjoyed very much in the NCAA meetings where she had questions about, are those leotards allowed? And the NCAA judges were like, there are no rules about <laughs> leotards in the NCAA. <laughs> of course, your entire naked back can show because we let them do what they want. So, I think the basis for this episode, something we've talked about many times over the years, is Nellie, as head of the Women's Technical Committee, going back and naming skills after herself. So, when Nellie took over as the head of the Women's Technical Committee after the 2004 Olympics, there were zero skills named after Nellie Kim in the Code of Points. Today, there are seven, despite the fact that she stopped competing in 1980. It's, it's the miracle of the modern age. 
It's tremendous. How did this happen? She hadn't competed in 25 years, and she's just skill, 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 skill. She has the most skills. So I do have to say, we have to, like, give Nellie her due because Mm. she really, like, she's an Olympic champion, uh, and she also is someone who worked her way up from, like, baby judge to women's technical committee head to being a FIG vice, vice president. Like she, she is a total badass and she really does some crazy ass skills. So um, she was, I will say Spencer confidently mm. a revelation on vault, the best vault mm. and floor gymnast at the 1976 Olympics. So if you go back in time to the seventies, early eighties, cause she was in the 76 Olympics, she competed in 80 and yeah. ask who the best vaulter in history of gymnastics is? The answer is Nellie yeah. Kim. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And she really had excellent form. And we're going to go over a lot of these. But, and like the other thing. I is, would say, sorry, I would say yeah. maybe until Shushanova, maybe until mm-hmm. Mary Lou or Shushanova, then you're starting to say that's until, until that period, I would say, yeah, Nellie is the best vaulter gymnastics had ever seen. One of the things about Nellie is, like, she has hops. Like, she really, you see the rise in everything she does. You can see why that is so important in the code. Like, you can't just leap and jump and whatever and stay at the same level. She goes up in the air. Um, So, and, like, her skills and her innovation are really legit. Like, she really was an innovator. So, I feel like one of the main things I have to emphasize is, like, I see still to this day, like, gymnasts, like, ending their elite floor routines with a double back and i'm like your nelly kim first of all your grandmother was doing that nelly kim was doing that 50 (laughs) years ago when the beams were made out of wood when the bars were still just jacked up p bars nelly kim was doing double back (laughs) to the end of her routine so um i think we and we're gonna go into the crazy ass beam dismount that she has named after herself because no one else was either innovative or insane enough or had (laughs) the crazy leg power to do this dismount. Um, I don't even think you can, anyway, we'll get into it. Okay. So I think uh, rectifying past errors where innovators of skills have gone unrecognized is something obviously that we totally support on this show. We're big fans of that. It should totally happen. Um, And of course, until recently though, like on the men's side, we have seen, skills retroactively named when Mm. they didn't get named back in time they have been named but on the women's side um (laughs) this consideration was only offered to nelly and nelly only so nelly herself head of the women's technical committee any past errors are rectified for anyone else if you're at least if you're not on the women's technical committee not so much i mean and that's saying like we don't know how many people have uh, tried to get a skill named after themselves and it's been denied. Maybe there just hasn't been as much push for this as there has been on the men's mm. side. But it has not happened except for people that are on the Women's Technical Committee. So, let's go into the Kims. Yes. Shall we okay. begin with Vault, her signature apparatus? We're going to start with Vault. There are, so many, there are so many Kims on Vault. So, first one, handspring forward on One and a half twist off. Named this after herself a little bit later than some of the others. This was, she named it after herself in the 2013 code update, citing her performance of it at 1974 Worlds. If you're watching along with us, you can see Nelly perform it in the Olympic event final of 1976 as her second vault. So I to the question in the commission, all of the skills that Nelly has named after herself, she did perform. There's nothing that she, like, just invented completely. The question, controversy, issue, is whether it's legit in terms of did you fulfill the requirements that everyone else would be held to to get a skill named after yourself. So for this one, the interesting thing is the competition she cites. That she got this, she invented this vault, originated it at 1974 World Championships. An early competition for her. Brand new baby, Nelly Kim, 1974. So she performed optional vault just once at 74 Worlds in the team competition. So she didn't make the all-around final, didn't make the vault event final. So she did optional vault once. There's no surviving video of this that I have seen of Nelly Kim vaulting in team optionals in 1974. 
that's a a tick in Nellie Kim's column. Plausible deniability. I haven't seen it. (laughs) But there is a surviving score, and it's 8.6. So here is the thing. Because you're telling me you hit a a new vault to get it named after yourself for 8.6 in 1974, which is not really a score for a hit. Well, you don't have to hit it. You just have to... You do have to hit it. You, you have can't to, fall. You can't and fall, have it be- but it doesn't have to be pretty. You have to land on your feet. Oh, no. It does not have to be pretty. Yeah. I just want but- to differentiate between falling and not falling and doing right. something you perfectly. You can't have fallen. Right. Which in 8.6 eight- is a really low score for 1974. It is a very low score for 1974. So, with this one, the verdict is like, I think it's believable that Nellie Kim originated the skill. I'm Ooh. doubtful that it was valid. Well, I mean, but I will say, believable that Nellie Kim originated this vault as the first person to do it at a nameable competition. Right. That, like that a is the World Championship right. or Olympics. That's the only thing is, that I have a problem with. Because, I could like, hear all of your little squeaking and humming, <laughs> and I had to go back because I understand, and yes, I recognize. <laughs> little beeps and squeaks happening in the background. Um she was definitely doing this vault and doing it successfully by the 76 Olympics. So, you know, it's, I have questions about the 74, but I feel like I also want to know the decision-making there because it's never really been about like super detailed accuracy with Nellie naming skills after herself. If she had just cited 76 Olympics, I would have been like, yeah, it's believable. I haven't seen any others. So, sure, but the 74 calls things into question. Also, in the category of, like, Nelly Gun and Nelly, in her final update of the Women's Code of Points as the Women's Technical Committee head before she became a vice president, all the vaults were devalued, which has happened a couple times to try to get vault scores in line with the other events. They were devalued either 0.4 or 0.2 in that um, update. This vault, not devalued. <laughs> Kept its same value, because, you know, it's hard. It is really no hard. Because she did it. Right. Um, and therefore, it is important. This one, not devalued. Everything else, for <laughs> everyone else, deductions. For me, the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume the role of um, devil's advocate for Nellie Kim in this episode. Okay. And um, I do want to say this is a really hard vault. Because twisting, I just remind everybody, if... So when we say a front a handspring salto vault. one and a half, right? It is no flips. Mm. So imagine you have to fly in the air from your hands, stay in a like horizontally position, twist your roll your body over one and a half times, and then land straight. You can't land uh, flying sideways. You can't rotate in the air. There's no flipping at all. And this kind of vault, it, they are just really hard to do. So I and I think the way that she performs it in the vault that we watched in '76 is like perfect. I mean, it's almost it's like spectacular for how hard this vault is. Um, so I just want to say she might be did the best one ever at one of those meets. And so you're like, yeah, because it's so freaking hard. Is that the standard, Jessica? Is that the standard for getting a skill named after yourself? That is. Or is is it you did it successfully and hit it and didn't fall first? I believe the standard in the Nelly Kim code is some other people tried it and it was trash and mine was the (laughs) best, which which could also be. We're going to get to that as a notion because that I feel like that's true of a lot of the skills (laughs) Nelly named after herself. (laughs) Okay, so. Are there other vaults that we need to go oh, yeah. through? Yeah, we her? barely even scratched the surface of Nelly's vaults, Jessica. <laughs> we got to talk about the souks. Okay. okay, let's get to the souks. Souk Tuck Fall, which an early named after Nelly, Nelly naming after herself. There were a bunch of code updates in that you know, uh, era when the open-ended code was starting because they had the 2005 code for that one year where it was still the Tenno system and then the 2006 code for the open-ended and then they did a 2007 update and then they did a 2009 update. So in that era, Nelly was just like, mine, 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 skill, skill, skill. Uh, Suk Tukful, she cites 1976 Olympics for the performance of this vault. Um, For me, this is the most legit of the Kims. And so I'm good. fine for it. She definitely hit it at the competition 
she claims to have hit it as at, and we know that, and we've seen it, and it showed her innovation and difficulty. Like compared to the other vaulters, like Torisheva doing a souk back tuck, Nadia doing a souk back pike, Nelly's doing a souk back tuck full, well beyond the difficulty of the rest of the field. The rest, yep. And the other thing is, I just want to remind people, so a souk is a half on, um, and then you flip the other way. There's a whole souk cause thing. Basically, think of it as a half on or a quarter on, and then you, and then she does a tucked full af- dismount off her hands, basically, from the vault. I can't believe I just said dismount off the vault. That was horrific. Wow. But it's because wow. I spent the whole day watching these ABC broadcast videos. So the announcer in 1976 shows her in her homeland, quote unquote, um, and she's watching goats being herded from a hill. And then there's power lines in the background. And he says, those are almost incongruous because you can, it's like you can see, you can imagine Genghis Khan crossing the fields with the Mongol herds back in the day. And here she is (laughs) standing here with her Olympic medals. Like (laughs) it's so (laughs) disturbing, but it was 50 (laughs) years ago. And they said, way worse things than that but that is because i just said a, I just said a dismount off the vault which you can't do mm-hmm. a dismount on the off the vault but back to nelly kim like yeah. uh, this does not have the the um block that we would see nowadays on a vault and what we expect well. on a vault but for 1976 where you basically had to jump off a piece of cardboard onto something that had no spring in it like now the vault has actual spring in it this thing was just like literally it's almost like they took a dead horse and you had that would have more spring in it a carcass than this old tiny (laughs) vault let me tell you um and then you have to land on some cement with some carpet over it it's amazing and she sticks it and the other thing i appreciate about her she has really really good form and these like there is no she had a step sideways um on her handspring front one and a half um but she does a really good job with these vaults like they are very they're beautiful vaults you say that now um wait for a <laughs> second um, <laughs> but yeah i mean the caveat here for me is that in four competitions in the 1970s we don't have video coverage of every routine so you i think you can't ever really like, at least I feel I can't ever really be super confident in retrospect that someone is the first to have done it. But as far as we can tell, this is like the legit Nellie Kim, and she should have vaults named after herself. She was a vault innovator. She was the best vaulter of her era. That's appropriate. I'm totally fine with this one. Very happy for the Souk Tuck full to be the Kim. Yeah, I'm not, I don't have a problem with it and from how it looks. Exactly. Ah, uh, yeah. Now and, let's talk about the souk layout fall, unless you have something else. No, I just want to say we are open. If you are one of those people that has a VHS or a... Oh, I would love it. A 76... What? Are, how many millimeters were they? A 7 millimeter, like my parents had of my birth, which I still think today is why I, from a very young age, never, never, never wanted to have children from watching that entire video. And they had slides made of it. If you have any slides... Or if everyone's crossing their legs at home, yes, that's how I also feel. It wasn't periods, though. I didn't mention periods. So if you um, have slides or something that we can see of someone else doing this, um, which because I do assume there is some, uh, you know, old timey film of all of the entire Soviet team from 1976 yeah. doing all of these skills and probably like there was like we know from the Olympic channels, excellent interview with um, Yurchenko that she was training just for fun into the pit. Uh, Yurchenko got double back back in the seventies and eighties. So it just took 50 yeah. years for Simone to compete it. But anyway, <laughs> please send them in to or the, or yeah. send, we can always do you an update. Always love to do an update. That, like Soviet domestic nationals, where everyone was just like, throw all your weirdest skills. <laughs> all of yeah. these were done like five years or more before. Let's talk about the souk layout fall. Hey, this is the Kim too. The Ish. Kim 50. Um, <laughs> <laughs> performance, she cites the performance of this one. I do like that Nelly cites all of her skills. It's very well cited. They're the only skills in the code of points name section, really, except the very recent ones that are cited. So, you know, Good use of, you know, showing your work. Um, 1978 Worlds, 
for this one in the event finals. We're watching her second vault from uh, the 78 Worlds event final. So, okay. Mm. Jessica, item we one. Could, yeah. This vault is tucked. Um, Can I, I just mean, say this vault is tucked? Is it tucked? It, mm, it is not tucked, but her hips are pretty much piked. And then she does bend her knees on the like second half of the flip. She definitely bends her knees and her hips are piked a little bit at the end. But what I would say from how the code reads now, would you give her credit based on what the code requires now for a, getting credit for a full? No. Right. Or for a layout. I would not give for a layout. Nellie herself would not give Nellie layout credit for this vault if she weren't Nellie, is my contention here. It was 78. It was a different time. The bigger issue, though, maybe, it definitely, not maybe, definitely is, that Nellie's own teammate, Natalia Shoboshnikova, performed the very same vault in the very same event final at the very same world championships. Shaposhnikova's name is nowhere to be found in the code of points for this vault. Very convenient. They both did it together in the same event final. Nelly's like, that one's mine. That one's mine. Not Shaposhnikova. Nope. I, now, uh, the thing... Oh, yeah. Okay, I yeah. do want to say about giving this credit for the layout position, because it is to- it is totally piked down. Um, no, I, I, think mean, I think that- it's tucked. I would say tucked. Like, she's fully tucking her Well, yeah, at the second half of the flip, yeah, it's tucked and and piked down, both. The first half, she's pretty laid out, and her legs are pretty straight. It's like half a layout, and then the rest is tucked to get around. Um, But I would say, going back to when Nellie was um, Women's Technical Committee head, like 2004, she, I I think back to the church and how Siobhan Church didn't get the church named after her, which is actually a Nabieva, and it would take 20 more years for someone to get the Nabieva named after her because Siobhan did do a Nabieva. It was laid out, but because she had to pike her hips when she grabbed the bar because she had to slow her swing to do another skill transitioning to the low bar, they didn't give her credit for a Nabieva. They gave her the church, which is essentially a, lay- a laid out to catch up over the high bar. So I think that by those standards this would not be given credit by Nellie's own standards of naming a laid out skill. It does not meet them. For 1976. With with regard to Shabashnikova doing the vault at the same time, it's not good. Nellie's isn't great either, but it's way better. Oh, the thing is, um, Shabashnikova had done it way better than either of these attempts at the 1977 World Cup, which was not a nameable, which was the year before. It was not a nameable competition. At the but time. But when you go back, if you're going back retroactively to name something after yourself, it should be because you actually were the first, not like because of a technicality. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. And... And yeah, like, I agree. Yeah, now you have because you have to sub- like people will submit skills that other people have done before now because they have to submit it at you know worlds. They need to get it put in the code of points. It needs to have a value by the judges so that they know what to do. You kind of have to submit it for like logistic bureaucratic purposes. You didn't have to submit this vault; it was already in the code. <laughs> right, and I do want to mention um, that you can women can now get skills named after them at World Cups. Only men could have skills na- named after them at World Cups for a very long time because that's fair. But finally, that has been rectified. Now, because it was so sexist for so long, should it be retroactively applied to women for all time? Yes, obviously it should. Obviously. Um, and I also wonder if Shepash Nikova is just like, they're doing what? Submit. Oh, God. People still care about that. <laughs> oh, I'm so over it. I'm living my life and enjoying myself while some people are still stuck in the past naming things after themselves. Um, just a, again, okay. devil's advocate, both sides. Uh-huh. I could see someone's like, oh, of course, <laughs> Nellie's still naming things after herself. She probably has that burn book from training camp from <laughs> 1974 still. Yeah. In also on this topic, in the category of Nellie Gunna Nellie and two gymnasts doing the same skill together at the same competition for the entirety of Nelly's time 
as head of the women's technical committee, if two gymnasts originated the same skill at the same competition, it got named after neither, all the way through to 2015 Worlds, when Sophie Shader and Kelly Sim both oh. did the Imbar to Kachev Piked, for, and both submitted it for valuation and naming at 2015 Worlds, neither got it named after themselves because they both did it, and it's named after no one officially in the code of points. So this is another example of, like, the Nelly's rules don't apply to Nelly. <laughs> they apply to, you know, Sophie Shader and Kelly Sim, who neither of them have that skill, even though they... It, it is colloquially called the Shader Sim, like the Durval Fenton, because it should have been, but it wasn't at that point because those weren't the rules. But, and, you know, Nelly gets this fault. Yeah, and we should say, to further your point, um, so now if two people submit it and do it at the same uh, meet mm -hmm. and successfully, then it gets named after both of them, like the Durwell Fenton. So uh, this code has evolved. The process has evolved. I think there may be the people who are on the committee have <laughs> evolved in their view of things. And that goes to the question of, should you retroactively... So total, an aside completely, should you yeah. retroactively apply the now rules to the past? And part of me thinks, yeah, when it's something really obvious like this and you have evidence that two people did it successfully at the same competition, then yeah, why not apply that? Um, but then they would have to apply all the rules retroactively, like, you know, the entire Soviet, Romanian, all those teams that all competed under their fake age passports would also have to be retroactively punished. So that is the can of worms that I do not believe that uh, the FIG wants to open. I would love it if they opened it, especially since <laughs> all those Romanians are like, yeah, I had 15 passports. Yeah, I wasn't that. I was only 11 <laughs> when I competed at that. We have an all episode about that, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm in favor of always, like, accuracy as the main thing for naming skills. So if you can prove it, yeah, change it. I'm in, you know, I'm in the camp of rename the Anodi after Mostoponova, who did it yes. in 1983 Worlds. Yep. Because that's the, a more accurate name. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Everyone knows the skills the Anodi and always will. And Anodi is a great gymnast, but it should be the Mostoponova. Yeah, colloquially, it will always be an Anodi, but it should. There is evidence. So all these gymnasts we're talking about, Shaposhnikova, Mostopanova, get in touch. We'll help you do the paperwork. We'll <laughs> get these things yeah, rectified. Uh, I mean, I won't, but Jessica probably will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't really want to do that. But yeah. Um, but there, an example on that front is Yelena Davidova on the Women's Technical Committee. This is another retroactive naming. Is the has the Tkachev, the regular Tkachev, named after herself in the Women's Code of Points. No one calls it the Davidova. We, we yeah. all say Tkachev because of sexism and because that's what you know it is all is referred to. Um, but you can still have you know another name for it in the code. Yep, I agree. That's interesting because I never associate Tkachev with the actual male gymnast Tkachev. Of the well, I mean, who would spend time thinking about a man? <laughs> like, what would that even be? It's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Club Gym Nerd, you get discounts and first dibs on live show tickets, an extra whole podcast every week, athlete dossiers for major competitions, code guides, options to commission your own segments. It also makes a great gift Check it out at gymcastic.com at the Join the Club tab. Some people just like to give us no strings attached money. They don't want to bother with joining Club Gym Nerd, and so they just donate. You can find our donate button for a no strings attached donation at the bottom of the club page at gymcastic.com forward slash club. All right. So are we on to vault number three now? We've completed vault number three. Those okay. there are only three Nelly vaults. We've completed. We completed. All right, there's vault. only three. She couldn't there's think of any three? other ones. Thought there's a handspring <laughs> or anything. All right. Well, what are you gonna do? Okay. Um. All right. Next up. Ah. Oh, beam. Beam. You guys, this is where Nelly Kim and her hops really come in. Do the kids still say that? Absolutely not. Okay. A uh, rocket <laughs> for legs. She. We're has. gonna talk about some beam dismounts okay. so first of all gainer tuck full off the end of the beam a dismount 
still very popular today in the NCAA field and sometimes in elite, still see it uh, all the time. Nelly cites the 1976 Olympics for this skill, um, and she definitely did perform it at the 1976 Olympics. We're watching her do it in the all-around final right now. Um, And I would say this is another one where we're playing the game of plausible deniability because we know she definitely did it at the 1976 Olympics. I can imagine other people doing it before that. People were definitely doing, you know, gainers. Um, But is there evidence? I haven't seen it. Yeah. So, you know, sure. And it's really well done. And I don't know if you ever had, like, pajamas that had the zippy. You know, your footy pajamas that had the zipper up the front? You cannot get over Nelly's leotard in the 1930s. (laughs) It's all around fine. I am so old. I had at least one leotard that had a zipper in the front. It was terrible. And all I can relate it to other people to is your zippy footy pajamas when you're a kid, Mm. which I would always accidentally zip my chin into so and get, like, stuck. So um, it's so uncomfortable. Can you imagine doing Olympic level gymnastics and getting all sweaty with uh, with your footy pajama zipper? Remember, like you'd roll over and the zipper would be cold, but the rest of you was warm. The zipper was just not. They didn't have those little foldy part back in the day. It was just zipper against your skin. I'm just saying to add to the difficulty of a mm. gainer tucked full zipperness. Seventy yeah. so zippers, you're saying, so polyester you're saying what, and mm-hmm. metal. Metal Much in a like leotard. A side jump on beam that gets an extra 0.1 for every skill. If you have a front zipper in the 70s, extra 0.1 difficulty. Yes. Just yeah. like deduction if you have cut out shoulders, but <laughs> a bonus for a big ass 70s bonus zipper. Bonus for uncomfortable zippers. <laughs> and the polyester leotards. I mean, you just put it on and you're sweating. Like, so gross. Was it easier to put on with a front zipper? Yes. Rather than these torture chambers that they have to squeeze (laughs) themselves into now. But also the technology is so different. Like, by the time I got my actual competition leotard, like, that thing was like today. Like, they created the all direction stretch, and it was so hard to put on that it is a workout in itself. And if you had to pee, 15 minutes minimum to get that thing off. Um I mean, they're like skin now, but back then, like the leotards, they didn't have the material to make the leotards fit very well. So they're all kind of baggy. Um, so it wasn't the same, like at literal battle to get your leotard off to pee the way it is now. Now where they should have had the zipper to make that easier was a different spot, but <laughs> that's a whole different podcast. So where, that's where were next, we? <laughs> Jessica's leotards innovation podcast. Here's what we need. Pee zippers. <laughs> Um, okay, so the gainer full, it's legit, it's hard, she does it beautifully. And for mm-hmm. that era too. I mean, think of how long yeah. it took for someone to get a gainer double full dismount named after themselves, because it's freaking hard. Okay, on the note of gainer dismounts, so something that I don't think I knew or hadn't realized that I knew and then forgotten about and then relearned, <laughs> renewed in the past week is the time in the 2009 code of points update when they removed the gainer layout full from the code of points and then added it back in 2011 after Julia Steingruber submitted it. And so then it's the Steingruber, but that was in the code of points before and they got rid of it, but did not get rid of the gainer tuck full, the Kim. Who was it named after in 2009? It wasn't named after anyone, but it was was just in in the, the code. It was in the code. And then it was gone, and then Steingruber was like, I want to do that, and resubmitted it. Interesting. Because there have been so many things. That was the purge, the code purge, which we could do a whole yeah. other commission giveaway just on all the skills they <laughs> took out of the code. There were so many How plus, many Soviets got their fun. names added, and how many Chinese gymnasts got their names <laughs> removed? Look how, it, look how it happened. Uh, so, um, yeah, I do want to say... Did I say my piece on this? It's hard. She had a zipper. Yeah. She did it really well. <laughs> it's beautifully performed and very it's yeah. very well executed. So This is top half of the Kims, definitely. They're yes. like, it's in the top half of legit for the Kims. Yeah. It's not like the souk full or some other. Oh, my God. You're about. never getting over that souk full. You are, it's a disgrace. Uh, no. When you compare it to, I, I just want to say the church. 
if that gets credit, yeah, the church is that. retro. The Nabieva is retro. I know I'm just making my point again, Spencer, because mm. you just made it again about that. Your souk full. So if if that get, is a souk full, then uh, Nabieva is going to be retroactively named the church. End of Done. school. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Next beam dismount. I think your favorite topic in the whole of the Kims yeah. is this Nelly beam dismount. Oh my god. This is the one skill that when Nelly named this after herself, she added it back to the code entirely. It wasn't just sitting there in the code unnamed after anyone. It had been gone from the code for like 20 years. And she was like, well, I'm Nelly Kim. I did this dismount. I did it at the 1980 Olympics, and it's going to be named after me again. So this dismount is a Insane. side aerial into back tuck. So you 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 dismount the beam, starting like you're doing side aerial, but then it's a back tuck, right? That's really the only way you can describe this. It's a double flip. There yeah, essentially, flips. it's like a, it's right. A, it's a double an side aerial, flip. It's an aerial cartwheel and then a back tuck. Uh, oh, is she supposed to land back tuck? So I always, the way I see this is the way she, she did it is as a double side flip. But you're actually right. She she lands sideways, but she turns herself towards the beam to not be landing sideways after she does it. Because for a long time, there were vaults, both in men's and women's, and dismounts, um, and skills on floor. But which not because- vault dismounts. <laughs> which is not a thing. There were, and even on bars, there were sideways landing skills, a flying sideways landing. Now, if you know anything about human joints and their health, you know that that's a terrible idea. Unless you're stepping, don't land sideways. And on floor, you can still do, um, a si- you know, a side flip is still something you can do on floor. You can still do it on beam, but nothing dismounting. That is not the thing to do. Um, even on floor, you can't even do a double side flip anymore rollout because rollout skills aren't allowed, not because the double side flip, but it's just very bad to land like that. So I always assumed she was trying to land sideways, but maybe by this time period, they'd finally gotten rid of that because of all the knee blowouts. Because back in the day, if you tore your ACL or any knee uh, ligament, you were done. Like there was no fixing it. It's only in the like... In the last 20, 30 years that they've been able to do that. Don't don't at me. I know. I'm just saying back then it was like, oh, my career's over and now it's not. Um, yeah, I do think it was. I mean, at least it, the skill is described as side aerial to back tuck. Okay. Rather so than a sideways. A double lane. side flip. It may have been intended to be a back tuck and landed a little sideways. It happens. Yeah. Um, it's I, so I, hard. I classify the naming of this skill as some of Nelly's best nonsense because like all of the, there's so many skills on various apparatuses back in the day that kind of were two in one and had multiple shapes where you're doing split leg and then legs together saltos. You're doing a pike, then a layout. There were all sorts of different things all gone. And this one was gone. And then Nelly was like, by the way, Nope, it's a skill again. Added this one and no others like it. And Just this hers. Is... <laughs> and it's like very obviously, like if, if someone did this when Nelly was head of the women's technical committee, the women's technical committee would be like, absolutely not. We're not, you can't do that. We're not recognizing this skill. <laughs> That's just a really ugly double tuck, and we're gonna deduct <laughs> the crap out of it and give you double tuck credit. <laughs> I do want to say, just for people that are trying to imagine this in their head, this is not the souk dis- back tuck dismount off beam. The one where you do a round off, so your hands are on the end of the beam, and then you just miss your feet and do a back tuck off the end of the beam. That is a different dismount. This is way harder, way more crazy. And what is this rated now? It should be like... E. Yeah, that's about right. An E or an F, even, because it's nuts. Like, if someone tried to do this now, I feel like they'd ban it. She did it. Yeah, that's kind of my point. It's like, it would be absolutely not allowed. (laughs) Right. That's the, yeah, that's, I agree with you. Also, she did it so safely, but can you imagine trying this dismount, the things that we'd see? 
you know, this is why they had to ban the handspring triple front on vault because Igor kept trying to do it and kill himself. And finally, they were like, that's enough. That's enough, Igor. We've had enough of you and your neck tattoo trying to end it. I mean, at this point, the Women's Technical Committee just downgrades into oblivion skills that they think are mildly ugly. Like the Fanya Lin dismount, you know, the same one that Riley McCusker was doing for a while in that one, which was like an E, and then they were like, no, it's a D, and then it was downgraded to a C, because they were just like, we don't want anyone to do this anymore, so we're just going to downgrade it, like, to a preposterously low level, like they're also doing with the candle mount, which is now a C, and we're all fine with it. Um, That's either, like, that would happen to this. Either they would be like, you can't do it, or they would just be like, okay, we'll allow it, but it's a B. (laughs) For no reason, because of safety. It's a B this for is, safety. This is people's biggest complaint, I think. Also, people that come from other sports into gymnastics, they're like, the rules change every four years and or every time the FIG puts out a rules clarification, which is every year. Um, how can you, like, how is this sport fair if the rules are always changing? But, you know, this is we love very complicated problems. We do love very complicated <laughs> problems. And, and I like that fans. I'm maybe in the minority that I like that they update the code of points every four years because things change. You have right. innovators. Difficulty changes. Equipment changes. Equipment changes are Expectations for what you can do for difficulty changes with those equipment changes. And you have to be – the code of points should be a living document, Jessica. You yes. have to be adaptive. I to agree. the changes of a modern age. Right. But I wonder if the baseball... Or to be like, oh, actually, Nelly, you didn't do that first. Living <laughs> document. Fix it. We need a new rule like the baseball just made where they have a shot clock or whatever, a pitchy clock, something where they you, it has to end in like two hours. You don't, you don't have so long to hit the ball. And oh, if, if only it had to end in two hours, Jessica. Oh, my God. Isn't it's it? It's getting so much better, though. It's getting, okay. it's getting a lot better. It's such a great evolution. Like, I would go to watch a baseball now uh, it, since they have changed this. But before, no. Being a, a student <laughs> trainer for, for baseball were some of the worst t- hours, seven hours at a time of my life. My God, so boring. So, and I have to say, you would some- be fine at a baseball game now if you went with someone you were friends with, because then you'd just talk to them the whole time and not pay attention at all. Like when we used to go to Dodger games with a couple of my friends who couldn't care less when I was in growing up, they would bring books. <laughs> Why <laughs> would you go? I know. I still make fun of this to this day. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> bring um, a new book. I'm just saying, I feel like we need a rule like that that, like you know, qualifications at Worlds can one session can last no longer than an hour and a half. That's what I would like to have. Just for me personally. (laughs) For you personally. All right. So, yeah. I mean, if nothing else, I admire the hustle for this one of Nellie getting it named after herself. Yes. It maybe not doesn't hold up to scrutiny, but she's going for it. (laughs) It's so freaking hard. All right. All right. Now I'm really excited to talk about the double tuck. It's the Kim, Jessica. (laughs) The double tuck. She did it. She invented Uh... it. 1976 Olympics. Yeah, definitely no one else competed a double back at that competition for sure. And no one else had ever done it. It's very good though. No one else had ever done it before. I, I have yeah. to say her 1976 double back is better than many of the double backs that were being done at the 84 Olympics, 88. Oh, I yeah. mean, those like eat your knees. I knocked my front teeth out. Uh, those double backs, all uh-huh. of my, all of my discs just shot out of my back on landing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's super, she does a very nice job for 76. Now, let me tell you why this is <laughs> Nellie's most brazen naming after itself. Absolutely. Because when Nellie competed the double tuck at the 1976 Olympic team optionals, she did it in a whole lineup of Soviet gymnasts who were also performing a double tuck. Filatova did a double tuck. Corbett did a double tuck. Right next to her, in the same lineup. Was Nellie's better than theirs? Yeah, it really was. A lot better. But that's not the standard. Plus, 
The double tuck was not originated at the 1976 Olympics. We've all seen Nadia doing it at the 76 American Cup earlier that year, and definitely people before that at domestic competitions. Who was it at, like, Soviet Nationals in 1974, 1972, being like, double tuck, double tuck, double tuck? So, yeah. And no, we know those weren't Sam, nameable competitions, but come on. And we know that Sam Peshek's mom did it on wrestling mats in the whatever era she did gymnastics too so i'm just saying yeah it's very much like naming it after herself from the 1976 olympics anyway even if she were the first the only one on her team to have done it would have been kind of naming it after yourself on a technicality but there were so many people at the 1976 olympics doing double tugs and she was like nope it's the kim i did it mine was the best and that's the rule now <laughs> yeah i think this is this is the the worst this is the most egregious yeah because it's so obviously provable that naming right. it after herself is insane <laughs> especially since she cited the meet that everybody else did it at with her in the same lineup literally <laughs> the same lineup literally in the same rotation same lineup on the same team all doing it back to back um all training it together i'm sure for a very long time yeah <laughs> if <laughs> if she so if this were retroactively applied, first of all, we assume someone did this before the 76 Olympics, number one. But if they um, apply... Yeah, I mean, we know... we Yeah, we definitely know that there were people at, like, domestic competitions dating back to the early 70s who were doing this at not nameable competitions. Yeah. But if we applied, retroactively applied, the everybody... Um, the everybody gets it named, what would it be called? What celebrity name couple name oh what this, like you're trying to put hat. philosopher corbett kim yes the philosopher the corbett kim. that the oh kim the corbett kim, kim, kim Tiva. Tiva. that rolls right <laughs> off the tongue i like yeah, that yeah i think it's great that's sounds... so much easier to say than double tuck too <laughs> but it sounds very like dangerous and exotic if you're gonna yeah. do oh do a blah 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 it sounds very like gatekeepy to say, mm -hmm, oh, you mm -hmm. have no idea what I'm about to do. Or double tuck, people can, you know. Right. She's going to learn knows what that is. That's something you could put in, like, a gymnastics movie written by someone who doesn't know anything about gymnastics. Yeah. Like, that episode of, what was it, Bones, where they were, like, I tried to push her out of her double tuck, but I couldn't in time. <laughs> the Maroni one. The Maroni one. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my God. That one's so good. Yeah, you could say, like, she's going to the Olympics, she's going to learn a Korkimtova, and then there'd be, like, footage of her doing, like, a Yurchenko back tuck. And they'd be like, she was ready for the Olympics before it happened. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> um, all right, so that that one, we're Xing it off the list. That's We're Xing no. that one off the list. It's either the Korkimtova or it's nothing. Right. Be all the right. Korkimtova or be nothing. I just can't wait to go through the subtitles for this because now we actually have subtitles for these episodes and the names that it comes up with. I send them oh, to the, Spencer the sometimes because I'm like, wait till you see what it said. About you, you wait know. till you see what you said. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we do that normally because we don't remember the things we say uh, when we record this podcast. And then we're like, wait, I said what? Why? Oh, God. But sometimes the things the computer thinks sometimes. that you said. It's not our fault. <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay. Can we get to the last, the last Kim, the I'm final ready. Kim, the final frontier? Another really solid one. The double back stretch pike, stretch tuck, mm. stretch pike. So, cited the performance of this at 1978 Worlds. Another really good one. Another. This is maybe the silliest addition into the code of points because. This is not in, into the named skill section, I should say, because this is not in the code of points. It's another one of those like multi-shape differences, because basically what she's doing here is setting in a stretched position and then doing a double pike. Yeah. She's stretched and then does a double pike. Yeah, which, there's no double layout. Doing this now, that's just a double pike. Like you're yeah. getting double pike credit and that's just going to be a double pike. And this as a different skill than a double pike is no skill number, no value can't do this for credit and yet nelly went back and named it after herself in the name skill section of the code of points referring to no skill at all 
no skill number, no skill at all, because it's not in the code of points, which is a really, really silly it's move. A, it's a power move. That's a power move, because where are other all the other removed skills in the name skill section? Where is the Mukina, the full mm-hmm. twist off the standing on the high bar, you know, and all these other skills that you can't do anymore? Where are all of these still in the name skill section? No, but Nelly's like, I did this and it's different than a double pike. <laughs> Even it though, is, if, when I was women's technical committee head, this would not be, have been different than a double pike. It always almost reminds me of the way that Bridget Sloan used to set for her double pikes because mm-hmm. she set looking backwards over her head. So she didn't set like how we're all taught, like set straight up and down, head neutral. Don't shift your head. She was like, hell no. I'm going to see where I'm going, look all the way at the floor, then I'm going to pull my feet over. And her double pikes are great. Another gymnast who does really wacky ass head positions but has no problem is um, Panor. We always talk about like her round off mm-hmm. is the craziest shit you've ever seen in your life. Like she is <laughs> trying to stick her head so far out from her round off. She doesn't look under her armpit down the beam. She's starting to stick her head so far out that like if someone was spotting her she would hit them with her noggin before she round offs down into her dismount um like on beam so um it is so weird and it's beautiful it's a beautiful stylized skill Mm -hmm. if you will oh yeah i like i love it aesthetically yeah but there is definitely no layout in here there's no layout flip there's an arch it's a double pike yeah there's a very long arch set and then a double pike, which I have to differentiate first. So if you're an NCA fan, you know that that uses the USAG code and that allows like a stretch or a yeah, stretch pike dismounts, like the double layout on bars. That's why everybody gets credit who isn't doing a double layout because you can do one layout and then a pike down of pike flip out of it and you can still that counts which oh my god for those who aren't watching along spencer just did a very exaggerated eye roll (laughs) very helpful in an audio medium (laughs) um those but i do like i wish if people were but in you know fig you can't do that anymore that's not allowed it was like a 96 92 but it's not allowed anymore so i do like i wish that people that were doing this in nca did it as stylized as she did instead of like well i'm trying to fake a double layout to see what i get credit for like if you're gonna go for something just do it like nelly kim all right so we're putting this on the this is the verdict on this one is lol (laughs) (laughs) This is at the bo- maybe at the bottom of the list because you just did a double pike with pretty technique and then decided it was a different skill and named it after yourself. Yeah. She should just have been like, Kim, double pike, parentheses, pretty. <laughs> and that should be the name skill. That should be what it's called in the code of points rather than trying to pretend it was a different skill. Just like I did this skill, but I did it better. So it's different. Oh my god. That should be, you should get to submit subcategories of a skill, like pretty version. <laughs> Mine is pretty cool version. <laughs> here's the one that got named after someone, but here's what's very cool. And it's interesting. Um I I mean it's just okay. like Mustafina submitting like the double Y spin and being like, but like y'all. <laughs> but hello. <laughs> We love Chelsea. <laughs> this is what, what the fig flack, I think that's what they call it, newsletters are for, mm-hmm. because they put the examples in there, and they'll be like, here's the original memo turn. And then they'll put a video next to it. Here is how you do it with no deductions. Insert GIF of, uh, of who were we just talking about? Oh, my God. I was mentioning Alia. but there, Alia Mustafina know. doing yeah. her double Y turn, and it's freaking stunningly beautiful. Um, or Janusha Francis, or any of the people who can pull their leg up to their ear and point their toe and kid their knee straight the whole way. So that is uh, why well, we love the fig flack. It's all the it's like the tea about what the judges say to each other in the moment is what happens in the Fig Flack newsletter, which is also <laughs> how often the code changes because we're like, oh, we're judging this way. Now we're judging this way. Good times. Um, OK, so what is your. All right. So let's go through the, the total skills now. So we have okay. the handspring on uh, one and a half turn off. Yeah. We're giving that a, it was beautifully done, but we think other people probably did it. No, I'm not necessarily other people probably did it, but she, how did she get it named after herself at a competition where she scored an 8-6 for it? Mm, okay. 
Then we have the Suk Tuck Full. We're Suk good. Suk Tuck Full. We're in it. Check mark. Okay. Totally fine. Okay. Then we have the laid out uh, uh, insert Spencer eye roll and like conniption fit falls out of his chair. What the hell? Uh, Suk Full. We're going to say no. I'm not allowed to talk about it anymore, apparently. So, I, <laughs> sure. Apparently, from the way that it was that Nellie Kim herself decided on skills, that would not be allowed. No. Shaposhnikova yeah. did it in the same event final. And that, yes. And someone else did it in the same meet. Okay, so that's an absolute no. So we have two, or one we and a half. A definite yes, a half, and a no. <laughs> All right. Now we are going to, what's next? Beam. Beam. Gainer tuck full off the end. I think we're okay with this. All right with I think that. we're okay with this one. Yeah. Um, uh, side air, the side aerial into back tuck yes. is the question mark one for me. Because, yes, original, did it, named it after herself when those kinds of skills are not allowed. It's a it's her greatest. Pa- I feel like this explains Nellie Kim, Nellie Kim as a why she was a great competitor and why she rose to the top of the FIG so mm-hmm. well. It's more like mm-hmm. a character reference, I would say, yeah. to put down mm-hmm. on a resume yeah. than it is really is this a legit skill or not. But so she has two and a half points and a character reference so far. <laughs> But also, definitely 100% her most badass, innovative, crazy yeah. skill. Yeah. Because we decided they would ban it if she did it to this day. All right. Next right. skill, double back. Double tuck on floor. <laughs> nope. <No. laughs> an absolute LOL. It should just be an LOL in the code is what we decided. Yeah. There. Yeah. And, it should and be- the sl- stretched to double pike. No. Yeah. That's, that's just, just ridiculous. Pike. Yeah stylized no layout we're done so we have two two and a half to three and a half if we're counting letters of recommendation or whatever we call the <laughs> character reference uh two and a half to three and a half out of seven all right that's uh that's a did that exceed record. your expectations <laughs> that, it did it did actually i'm gonna count three out of seven okay I think right. that's a solid. That's a solid uh, compromise. Yeah, even though I do think someone else probably did a gainer full off beam, but not at a world at a world or yeah. Olympic. I mean, there were more. Wait, were there more worlds back then, or less worlds back then? Every four years. Yeah. So then, when you think about it that way, you can only you no World Cups, and there were less World and Olympic championships. That it could be by that that there wasn't someone who did it at one of those meets so then i have to give it so i'm gonna say yeah we're we gave that a point we yeah. gave gainer Trek full a point yeah yeah so three out of seven yeah i feel like that's also something to put that's a reference point will i succeed in this job here this is here's the, <laughs> the actual record and here's what i did seven mm-hmm. out of seven yeah i think this goes a long way to showing um, the kind of person and persistence of character that leads someone to be a successful athlete in such a difficult sport. Right? We've awarded a lot of hustle points. Right. And to that end, I do want to present um, this is one of my favorite moments in Nellie Kim history, which is um, a video of her standing outside arguing with her coach and someone is filming like from behind a phone booth, which used to be a thing in the day and back in the day. And she this keeps, is a bus stop or something. She keeps gesturing to her coach, like tapping on her head, like you idiot. What are you thinking? And then he is just blah, blah, blah to her. And she has turned away from him. And when she does look back at him, she just taps her head again. Like, Ugh, what's wrong with you? Oh, it's one of the, it's, it's another one of my favorite uh, Nellie Kim videos of all time is her her strength of character, even when faced with a coach giving her the business. She was like, absolutely not. And tell it to the metal doorframe because I am not <laughs> listening. I have identified with l- very little in my life more than Nellie Kim's facial expression throughout that interchange. <laughs> I, I'm there. We do need to make 
some shirts and oh my god you guys we have tapestries in the pinball aren't taking advantage of the tapestries it's not a (laughs) tapestry like it's a woven thing you can put on your you know wall i mean it's it's a print of something gigantic that you can hold up out of meat basically is what these are that's not paper so it won't rip so these are in our store at gymcastic.com and we just so we ordered some for the live show and oh my god the first one came it is enormous and like simone is going to be able to see this from space it is spectacular and i feel like we need one just of this scene of nelly kim (laughs) at the bus stop (laughs) just like no take it away from me i'm not going to talk to you about this oh i love it so much all right do you have any final thoughts um no but like wow nelly (laughs) you can't say she didn't want it enough yes that's never something you could say about nelly kim I am going to say... And she um, got a 10 15 seconds after nine. 15 seconds! <laughs> I just say there are some things that you can, um, you know, judge about a person and you can decide. Or are there things that you can use for reference in your knowledge bank of what a person's character is? And I feel like that is mostly what we've gotten out of this episode. Like, if we were in a zombie apocalypse... Would I be afraid Nellie Kim would eat me first? Yes, but also I think we would live if we were with her. If we were on the same side. <laughs> that was not clear from the premise. If we were still human, if we weren't all zombies yet. <laughs> I still am. I'm, I'm not, I feel like inconclusive. <laughs> Oh my god. I want to thank Inga so much for this amazing commission. If you guys want to join Club Gym Nerd, we're going to be doing more of these giveaways for any topic you want us to talk about for a whole episode. You can do that. Uh, join Club Gym Nerd um, at gymcastic.com. And also, we are going to be doing these. We do a whole extra podcast every single week and we answer your questions live um we're definitely going to be talking about on friday suny is no longer on the classic roster so we're going to talk about that um, we'll talk more about simone and gabby's uh come back and any questions you have about nelly kim um and uh thank you to uh, everybody that signed up because we will be doing these extra podcasts um at classic at championships at world championships you get a podcast each day of competition. So um, that's something to look forward to. Lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of extra stuff coming up soon, starting at US Classic uh, in two weeks. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you so much to Inga. Thank you to her boyfriend for gifting her a membership. And then she ended up the winner. Um, And we will uh, see you guys on Friday for behind the scenes. Remember to that's noon Pacific. Remember to take off on gay split on rights and we'll see you on Friday. Thanks for listening. This show is created, executive produced, produced, edited, audio engineered, and published by me, Jessica Coburn. Managing editor in charge of show notes, podcast content, and wrangling over enthusiasm is Spencer Barnes. Our news editor is Uncle Tim of gymnastics-history.com. And customer service IT, Gymternet News, and additional production services are provided by Steve Cooper, aka Fact Check. <laughs>